Ethan Wanieri went from a school kid to Premier League footballer overnight in one of the stories of the season. He became the youngest wonder kid debutant in Premier League history with Arsenal when Mikel Arteta subbed him on for a game versus Brentford, given it was in the 90th minute and they were already 3-0 up. But still, he put his name out there. Now he's representing England at youth level, being called up to the under-17 Euro squad this summer and has his sights set on the Arsenal first team. He's currently too young to be added into FIFA 20. 23, so I've created him in-game with a profile photo and all, and we'll be simulating and playing his entire career. We're gonna do whatever it takes for the talent to reach the top. On club and country level, he could be the next big thing and an English sensation. You guys have been requesting it and demanding it in the comments below, and Sir BCHD is out here delivering. The 15-year-old born in 2007 is now in FIFA. The youngster who's probably more focused on his GCSEs than he is football. He's currently the worst player on the roster at Arsenal and he's got some hefty competition from his other Arsenal Academy talents. Not to worry, the Cam who can play out in the left and as a centre forward has been at the club since 2020. He's got a lot of improving to do. The left footer is 5 foot 5, 165 pounds already with a 4 star weak foot and high attack and work rates. He might be in the 50 overalls wise, however he has some light green and dark green attributes to boast about. They're the main key elements of his game as he has a starting market valuation of 25k. The number 83, he's nowhere near the first team. He is getting thrown onto the loan list straight away. We're going to slap him on a development plan, get that training in. He'll be focusing on the advanced playmaker development plan, improving his certain categories like his passing, dribbling, and getting that five-star weak foot. And I'm actually pretty keen for this career sim because we actually haven't done an attacking midfielder playthrough yet on FIFA 23. It's always been wingers or strikers or centre forwards. Let's wait and see what kind of loan deal offers come in for our boy. Now, I actually want to get ChatGPT and AI involved in this career sim. I want to ask it, what would be a realistic club for Ethan to join in career mode? And right now, we're just getting a bunch of options thrown at us. We're getting the likes of Leipzig, Monaco, Ajax, Sporting. Starting point he is at in our save. It wouldn't even get game time in these recommended clubs. So, we'll take that into account. Now, it has been a struggle to secure a loan deal for Nguyenieri. Nevertheless, two offers rejected. Third time's a charm. We have the Vanarama Conference League. League, the fifth tier of English football in this mod and that's why Borum would have offered us a two-year loan deal it's exactly what we want however we're outside of the transfer window and the move will be made official in January so he's gonna have to spend half a season at Arsenal warming the bench but it's a sacrifice we're willing to make it's gonna be a reality check going from the first division to the fifth non-league football is where this young talent will be balling out for the foreseeable future it might not be the bright flashy lights of London he can't flex and say he plays for Arsenal anymore, but it's for the greater good. Here is how he lines up in this 3-5-2 formation, playing right behind the strikers Newton and Nlovu. Nwanyeri will be that creative outlet in the middle of the park, and whether it's Arsenal or a team in the fifth tier, he is still the lowest rated player on the roster. And all we care about is him getting game time and minutes under his belt to improve his game and just become a better player. The first out of two seasons is done here for Nwanyeri in the Vanarama Conference as Boreham Wood finished 10th out of 13 teams, so they're not really a strong promotion candidate. And now, thankfully, he's no longer the worst player at the club, but with a cheeky plus two, he's turned 16, and the number 14 got himself 20 appearances and five goal contributions, three goals and two assists, with an average match trading of 6.47. He's in good form, and we got him at that five-star weak foot. Everyone's got to start somewhere, dead set. We're taking small steps, and his market value has risen 11%, now standing at half a million pounds. For season two, training and his second stint in the Vanarama Conference. We are changing up his development plan early days. I want to secure that 5 star weak foot, 5 star skill move combo early. We're applying that dynamo development plan as we're still in the lower leagues. We can experiment around a bit and help develop all facets of his game and return to Arsenal as a promising hotshot. The young gun couldn't be a pivotal figure in their promotion push as they finished 9th out of 13 teams. Warren Wood never really destined for League 2 as Ethan with a full season of football, a pre-season 
reason to prepare. He has experienced some rapid overall growth right now with a gargantuan plus nine now standing at a 66 overall, 17 years of age, and has climbed to becoming the second highest overall player at the club. And in 35 appearances in the league, he managed four goals and eight assists, 12 goal contributions, and an average match rating of 6.17. He got a goal in some preseason friendlies too, secured him five star skill moves, five star weak foot. This kid is already set to becoming a baller. A five foot five pocket rocket now valued on the market at 1.7 million pounds. So he's still got another six months before he returns back to North London. Over the course of his third professional season, we're going to apply a cheeky new development plan on him. I don't want him going on balance. We're going to go attack and midfielder and just get him through the ropes. Learn his trade and craft down in the lower leagues as he's still got another run out in the fifth tier. Now he can officially pack his bags back to the arsenal as his half season here, six months left. And Ethan got himself 15 appearances, one goal and three assists, an average match rating of 6.5. The prodigal son will return back to his hometown club. He did what he had to do in non-league and now he is back halfway through season three. Now it's time to up the playing field and let him compete at a higher level. He's now been put in a pretty healthy position, surpassing a lot of the other academy talent on the roster, progressing and climbing up the ranks. Trust in the process as we add him back to the loan list. What's the next chapter in Winery's career? Where to next as the Arsenal first team starting role is still a little bit of a pipe dream for now. This would be an exotic career choice and different type of career path that Winery would be facing as Girona have offered a loan to buy. I'm not entertaining that kind of offer. I just want a one year loan. We've come to an agreement. Girona have negotiated a two year deal actually. It looks like another two year spell away from the Emirates as we accept that one. We're giving this move the green light from the Premier League to the Vanarama Conference now to La Liga. Ethan's going to be experiencing a whole new league, a whole new culture and it's a club who recently have developed a reputation for developing young players on loan. They have a good relationship and are a feeder club for Manchester City. So let's see if they're going to give the old Arsenal a favour and help develop Winery's career. I guess I stand corrected as the now 17 year old Englishman joins Girona in the second tier. But according to the league table, they're currently top and look like heavy promotion candidates. We'll be slotting Winery into that advanced playmaker spot. Placed higher up in comparison to the other midfielders and just behind the striker. He's now in a much better team, joining them halfway through their season. Let's see how the youngster gets on here in Espana. Come the end of the kid's third campaign, he has achieved his first major milestone in his career. He's won a league title in the second tier of Spain and has gained promotion to La Liga with Girona, where he ranks in the whole entire roster. He's towards, still towards the bottom end. Nevertheless, six months here in Spain and he has grown a plus two. Now he's turned 18, he's officially an adult and his production, four goals and five assists, he can do them both. An average match rating of 7.07, he just got his appearances in the league with nine goal contributions as key attributes like ball control, short pass and dribbling are all coming along nicely. Top flight football coming for the first time ever, now with a market value of 3.4 million pounds. La Liga is tough and our boy has to have a strong supporting cast around him if he wants any chance of staying up. Here is how he lines up in this newly promoted Girona side. Still occupying the first choice camp position right behind Vallejo up front and his training regime for this season. He's already grown a plus one in the off season and will be applying the advanced playmaker development plan. Trying to work on him and improve that passing category because it's kind of crucial when you're an attacking midfielder. Only time will tell how long it's actually going to take for us to see a first fully maxed out attribute. Look at this guy. Relegation battle who? Ethan's never heard of it. He damn near got his side into a European qualification. Finishing 8th and over in the Copa del Rey, they were eliminated in the round of 16 or 1-0 to Yatafe. The quiet achievers who finished above the likes of Valencia and Sevilla. Let's touch base and see what kind of progress Ethan was able to make this season. He turned 19 and got himself a plus 5 overall boost. He's grinded his way into the 70s and he's approaching 80 quick smart with 40 appearances this year. He was actually one of their main playmakers with 14 assists and leads the charts when it comes to providing goal scoring opportunities. An average match rating of 6.66. Might have some supernatural forces on his side as he also found the back of the net nine times and he's driven up the price of his market value. Now standing at 14 million pounds on the dot. A 566% rise is absolutely insane in this economy. His impact was felt at the club and his form was so good towards the back.
back end of the season that he actually was nominated for the Player of the Month award. He's still got six months left on this two-year loan deal at Girona, but he's not part of the future first team project. I'm just going to terminate it and send him back to Arsenal. It's a real pivotal moment, a turning point in his career. If we actually do want to send him out alone half a decade into this career sim, or is he going to try and fight for a spot in the first team at Arsenal? As that loan termination has boosted his overall, it's glitched it up to 80. A cheeky plus four upgrade on the plane trip back to London. Now has a market value of 43 million. We're going to have to hook him up, set a brother up with a brand new deal. Give him that 90k a week as he is now one of the brightest English youth talents in the country right now. He's ready to make his mark in the Premier League. He did his time in the lower leagues. He impressed over in Spain and dominated La Liga. He doesn't want to follow that failed wonder kid pipeline, so we'll pop him back on advanced playmaker and hope that development plan does the trick. A lot of players ahead of him in the pecking order, but at a top tier club like Arsenal, that is going to be a reality. We're also dripping him out this season. We're giving him a fresh updated look with some new boots and they've got that retro mercurial feel about them. The OG Ronaldo boots back in the FIFA 12 days. What a look. I just want to put the feelers out there and see what kind of clubs are interested taking him on a loan deal. Nah, Spurs of all teams, are you kidding me? The audacity from these lots to go and offer a one year loan deal for Nwanieri. Look, if it was any other Premier League club, I probably would have accepted. But Spurs, nah, I can't be having Gunners fans cooking me in the comments below. I would never recover from it. I'd be cancelled straight away. Now, here's a fascinating offer, actually. The Italian champions, Napoli, have actually come through. They're hitting us up for a two-year loan deal, which I'm just going to opt for one. I don't think he's that type of two-year loan deal player anymore, but he can still find room at a top club. Italy, Serie A, it's a league he hasn't explored yet. And let's just see where it takes him. One year away from Arsenal isn't going to kill him. It's not going to hurt him. This one confirms that Ethan is now off to the Diego Armando Maradona. At least he gets a full season at the club and not this half-half nonsense. He's only 19. He's got time on his side to take a little bit of an Italian detour. They've got a pretty strong team in their ranks, actually. Could be potential Scudetto contenders. Here's ideally how he'd line up in the starting 11. Another 4-3-3. But whether he actually gets game time or not, hey, that's a different story. It's been a season of if buts or maybes for Nuweri at Napoli as he finishes runners-up in the Serie A title race. The Bartonobe losing out to Juventus, coming through runners-up. However, they did manage to get the better of them over in the Italian Community Shield, the Super Cup 4-3. He does manage to take home his first piece of silverware, but another area where they lost out to Juve was in the Coppa Italia. However, hold your horses as Nuweri had his first stint in European football. He delved straight into the Champions League with Napoli. They're in a Champions League final, the big dance up against Tottenham of all teams. Before we watch the final play out and see Ethan play the biggest game of his career so far, I want to take a look and see what he was able to accomplish this season. He was the fourth highest goal scorer with eight goals. He's pulling the strings, baby. He's the master puppeteer with 22 assists. With an average match rating of 6.88 across all competitions, he managed to fight on multiple fronts, stayed healthy. This lone move out to Italy seemed to be a blessing in disguise and can he cap it off with the perfect fairy tale finish? We're gonna need those two up front to do the business and a North London boy to get the better of Spurs. Nwaneri, can he have the game of his life? What is he gonna pull on the European stage? And he scored an 89th minute winner. He's only gone and done it, the madman. He responded to Harry Kane's 65th minute equaliser and has denied the veteran English striker of the Champions League, just like in 2019. And Chiellini, roll the clip. By Tottenham, it's the history of the Tottenham. He has made Napoli history, winning the double in the south of Italy. And you saw those Scudetto celebrations. Just imagine if they went on to win the Champions League. He's become a legend of the city in just one season. Now I think he is Premier League ready. He got himself a plus four upgrade, now standing at an 84 overall. He's looking extremely promising. Of course, that goal in the Champions League final, and he also managed an assist. His production this season has increased to 32 goal contributions, getting the most game time out of any season so far. 56 appearances in all competitions, and now his market value currently stands at 79.5 million. He's had the season of his life with some world-class ballers around him. I'm sure Arsenal are going to welcome him back with open arms. Does Ethan actually really want to go back to the Premier League and link up with Arsenal again? Because he's popped up, he's reached out and said he wants to make this loan spell permanent after he's just put up a Champions League final masterclass against Spurs. I can't believe what I'm reading here, but the young gun is nominated for the Player of the Month award. I know Italy can have that effect on people. The 
food, the culture, the vibe. I think he's enjoying his time here in Serie A a little bit too much. Has he done enough for an England call-up in 2028 for the Euros? On his return season back to Arsenal in Season 6, he has come through. Back with a bang, baby. He's 20, has potential to be special, and has got a cheeky plus 2 upgrade. Now standing as an 86, he's one of the best midfielders at the club, just behind Martin Odegaard. For this season, we're going to debut the Shadow Striker development plan. We want him training to improve that agility, finishing, attack positioning. The Gunners fans just deserve to see this kid, the homegrown talent, balling out at the Emirates week in, week out. In that midfield three, combining with Rice, the CDM, and Odegaard, slightly more advanced. Martinelli, Goncalo, Ramos, and Saka make up a fearsome front three trident. Now that he's back in England, surely the selectors and Gareth Southgate are looking. Can he find his way into that 87-rated five-star midfield that the three Lions currently have with Bellingham, Rice, and Mount? This is the season to prove himself in his Premier League debut. From a Champions League final to a Europa Conference League final, yet yeah, no wonder why Ethan wanted to stay in Naples. He didn't want to come back to England just to compete for a tin pot trophy. We'll watch this one play out just like the Champions League last year and see if Nuaneri can make an impact. And no, it was actually a Saka miss penalty. A Raphael Leal goal to win AC Milan, the Conference League. He dropped an absolute stinker, a disaster masterclass in the final with a 5.4 match rating, disappearing when it mattered most in the quote-unquote big game. There's no need to fear though, as domestically they were on point, winning the title, securing Champions League football again for the Gunners with 80 points, only copping four losses all season, and the Gunners are gunning, they are back as over in the FA Cup, they lost out in round six, eliminated by Norwich 2-1. And the Carabao, yeah, no signs of cup silverware as Newcastle knocked them out over two legs, 5-4 and aggregate in the semi. A bittersweet ending to what was a successful season. Now that they're champions, upon his first into the club, Nuaneri can celebrate as he is now one of the world's best. He's in that world-class territory with that plus four upgrade. He managed to secure 51 appearances, 12 goals and 13 assists across all competitions. The first time in his career, he has achieved double figures in both departments with an average 6.91 match rating, a healthy 25 goal contributions for the Nike sponsored athlete. Something else we can also take from this season is his first maxed out stat, 99 sprint speed. He's hit a couple dark greens and dribbling is up next, standing at a 98. Back in the homeland and back on his game as he has reached an 136 million pound market valuation, risen 49% this season. And his performances have caught the eye of Gareth Southgate and England as they've called him up to the national team for the first time in his career, bumping that midfield rating up to 88. Gearing up for a deep run in the 2028 Euros, he's taken his talents to the international scene as they've been drawn into Group D alongside Belgium, Switzerland and Hungary. So it's going to be a tough one. Nuaneri was on a mission this summer with England as they got through to Group D passing with six points. Belgium finished top and they were matched up against France. Getting revenge for their World Cup knockout in Qatar 2022 with a 1-0 win and then in the semi-finals it was a seven-goal thriller against Italia and it was a 4-3 loss knocking them out and losing to the eventual champions Italy. Some extreme Extremely valuable experience earned there for Ethan. On his first major international tournament, he did manage to play every single game. With five appearances, he didn't score, but he got himself an assist. As he gears up, keeps his head up for the 2030 World Cup. It's lucky season seven in Ethan's career sim. It's his second season here at Arsenal, and they're looking to defend their Premier League crown. We've got to switch up the development plan again, and I think we're just going to put him back on advanced playmaker. He might be cooking up a couple of more 99 maxed out stats and could really put himself into Ballon d'Or contention, maybe even get a nomination as he has transformed himself into one of the top five players at the club and we've got to renew his contract. We've got to get him that crucial first team role, three year extension, 180k a week and these instructions for his game, get forward with his attack support, stay on the edge of the box for crosses, cover the centre and free roam position freedom. Just look at him, the short king is destined for greatness. Remember the name as he's become an English champion with his boyhood club at two years is running. The Gunners are back on top and with 95 points this time they've done it emphatically and with some proper conviction as well he's also taken out a domestic cup title with a FA Community Shield win against Brighton 3-1. That launched their season perfectly however they miss out on the domestic treble losing to Man City and the final at Wembley of the FA Cup 4-3 on pens. Meanwhile over in the Carabao it was elimination over in round 4 to Everton 2-0. That's all their hope slash but it's two European finals in a row. It's a 
a replay of 2006 Big Dance. 23 years later, Arsenal v Barcelona. They finished runners up with equal points against their opposition tonight in the group stage. They knocked out Wolfsburg. Ethan had to do it to his ex club at Napoli in the quarterfinals and sent them packing. And then it was a 7 3 aggregate masterclass against Man City to secure him their spot in the final. Tonight is the moment. Tonight is his time. Here we have the two teams are lining up. And I want to play this one through. Let's see how he feels on the ball, how he plays. As he has the opportunity to win the Champions League final with two different clubs and to win it with Arsenal for the first time in their history. He's leading the troops out tonight as they're battling for that holy grail. We'll get Goncalo Ramos to kick us off. Free kick Barcelona. Early set piece opportunity for Ansu Fati on the dead ball situation. The wall jumps and he hits the post. Early scare there. And it's Chavi Simmons with the power shot and Aaron Ramsdale got down to save it. Nuineri, he stays on side and he wants that finesse shot and it's to Stegen to parry it out. He got down low. Oh, Makoko's in here and Arsenal are in trouble and it's Yusufa Makoko who draws first blood and gets Barcelona the first goal tonight. They take the lead 1-0 to the Blaugrana. Here we go again, Makoko. Schlotterbeck with a big defensive intervention. And Di Oliveira loses out. How is that not a foul? And it's 2-0 to Barca now. Ansu Fati capitalizes on the defensive mistake. And Barcelona double their advantage with their homegrown superstar. Now we've left Nguyenieri and co. with an absolute mountain to climb. 2-0 down after half an hour. And look at the... The skills here from Ethan. He just wants to showcase. What the hell was that? Declan Rice went on a ski trip. When Neri from deep, he completely sends his defender. And Ramos back inside. We need a nice little one too here. Neri. It's Ramos. He's still running. The defense were caught off guard. And it's any time to get a goal. It's now. It's Ethan in the clear. And we've half the deficit right on added time. We've gotten the goal before we've entered the sheds. And it's none other than the English generational talent. And a swift left foot finish into the top right. Right hand corner was enough. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a lifeline. What the hell? Finish him. Like a hot knife through butter. This Arsenal defense are all over the shop. It's going to be a real tough fight back if we want to send this into extra time. Here we go, Ethan. He might just have to grab the game by the scruff of the neck himself. He runs through the entire team. Ethan Wanieri. And that was his moment. He's hit the crossbar and the woodwork's still shaking. A trademark left foot finesse shot. And we get denied. What is going on? And Chavi Simmons squares it across. That's the fourth. This team has been dreadful. I can't explain it. It's like something was off. Did they get food? Food poisoning the night before? Did they wake up on the wrong side of the bed? Have they been paid by Barcelona to play like absolute numpties? Oh, it's a deflection. It could be five, you know. It nearly was. Smith throw. Now Martinelli is onside. He needs to get there ahead of Arthur. And with two minutes left to spare, Bruh. could this be the goal? No, of course it's not. That, ladies and gentlemen, was absolutely embarrassing. Played off the park from minute one. The only silver lining was that Ethan goal right before half time to give them a slither of hope. They they never really were a chance. Failed to create chances. Failed to get the ball forward. Barcelona, in every area of the pitch, they were outplayed to a T. It's 2006 all over again, and Ethan loses out another big European final. And still, Arsenal's hunt for a Champions League goes begging. Arsenal stuck in a rut. I think that sums it up perfectly. Ethan had to come out and address the media, take the hot questions on. The wait for European glory continues for the club and their fans. And this season, he managed to grow a plus two now standing at a 92 overall 22 years of age that's the magic number he got pretty much exactly the same goal contributions as last year 25 goal involvements 10 goals and 15 assists he outperformed Odegaard again and it's double figures in both departments managed to pick up another 99 maxed out stats too for that matter in the technical department with 99 dribbling and 99 long pass that has driven his market value up nine percent now standing at 149.5 million pounds. That isn't the kind of form that's going to get him caught up to a World Cup squad. He's won the Premier League already with Arsenal come oh so close to claiming European silverware, but it just hasn't landed. It might be time to put him back out there on the market and see what kind of big clubs are interested. Season 8 summer is going to be extremely fascinating. We're taking a play out of left field and adding him to the transfer list. He needs to be the main star of the show in order to thrive like he did back at Napoli. For the time being though, we're putting his training back on attack and midfield it's been a slow summer with no international football to worry about. It's just been transfer focused. We've had three offers from three massive clubs 
arrive at our doorstep. First up, it was Barcelona who came through with 203.9 million pounds, and we couldn't send him there after they scored us in the Champions League final. It would have just been disrespectful to Arsenal. Another big move that would have been disrespectful in so many more ways would be signing for Chelsea as they offered up Rory Wilson plus 179.2 million pounds and a little bit of a player swap deal. And finally, another offer from Spain as they saw what he did at Girona and Real Madrid were interested, bidding the exact amount Barcelona did, 203.9 million pounds. And that's the easiest yes I've ever given in my life. Ethan's gonna have to bid farewell to this Arsenal squad. It could have been third time lucky. It could have been third time's a charm. But Nguyenieri's gonna jump ship for the betterment of his career. It's a tough choice to make, but it's an executive one as he becomes a Galactico. Shipped out to Spain yet again. It's a league he is oh so familiar with for a nine-figure sum. He's just made the biggest transfer move of his life. And he secures the number eight jersey at the Bernabeu. The Shaw King is now making a miraculous return to Espana. He's arrived at one of the biggest clubs in the world. And here is how he lines up in their 4-3-3 false nine formation. He slots nicely into that midfield trio alongside Barella and Valverde. We're deploying him as the advanced cam. He instantly becomes the best outfield player on the roster. That is the big difference here. As the board and whoever negotiated his contract have slapped him with a 419.2 million pound release clause. It's gotten to that stage of his career where we've started to hook him up with a couple of traits and perks in his locker. And he deserves it. He's got speed dribbler, playmaker and technical dribbler which is all CPUAI anyway. In game he's got swerve pass, flare passes and set play specialist. He's aspiring to become a gun midfield maestro and go down in the history books here at Madrid. I wonder if he stayed at Arsenal this season, would he be in this top four conversation for the Ballon d'Or 2029's player of the year? And three out of four former teammates have been nominated. Saka, Goncalo Ramos and Mbappe are all up for the prize. And the golden ball winner is actually Bakayo Saka. And where would he be without Munieri feeding him all those balls down the line, setting up attacking plays for him and the like? I'm a bit conflicted though, because midfielders like Cam, center mids, they just are never nominated for the Ballon d'Or. It's like impossible for them to win. So we're going to have to face the dilemma. If we really want Ethan to be in a chance for a Ballon d'Or, we have to convert him to either center forward, a winger, a striker. For now though, we'll just focus on his individual performances and game time here at Real Madrid. I was clowning Arsenal a couple seasons back for not even having Champions League or Europa League football. This time around, the joke's on me because Real Madrid didn't have any European football whatsoever. They took home the title, 103 points. When Eri becomes a Spanish champion with one loss finishing Centurions and his former club, Girona, actually experienced relegation finishing 18th with 34 points and over in the Copa del Rey was a 2-1 win against Celta Vigo in the final to claim a Spanish double. Is 2030 a World Cup year and Ethan was on that demon timing? 92 overall and it's the first season he hasn't grown whatsoever. At 23, he is still a couple years away from his peak and he has managed a sensational season of 30 goal contributions being the third highest goal scorer and being the main playmaker at the club with 17 assists and 13 goals. He plays perfectly right behind that attacking trident. 13 goals, 17 assists, an average match rating of 7.23 domestically. No 99 stats to boast about or new attributes that have entered the dark green territory. His market value has gone down 3% but he still stands with a price tag of 146.5 million as he is out jet setting on international duty. And this is how he lines up in Gareth Southgate's starting 11. He is alongside Bellingham and Rice in midfield. The Ballon d'Or winner Saka starts for the three Lions and it's a five-star England outfit. They've been drawn into Group B alongside Japan, Qatar and Mexico so they should be passing with flying colours. He got the call from the boss on international duty for the second tournament in a row. This time his debut at the World Cup. Let's see if the 23-year-old has got that dog in him. And reach the big dance they did. It's the three Lions up against record holders of the World Cup Brazil in 2030. A fight to the death. It's going to be a blockbuster clash, but here's how they made it. Winery and the gang finished top with 9 points, 10 goals scored in the group stage, and then in a round of 16, edging past Uruguay 2-1, taking Norway to town 4-2 in the quarterfinals, and then taking care of business against the Italians 4-0 to book their spot in the biggest game of all. And guess who's leading these lads out? You all know him, you all love him. As the famous flow rider once said, it's going down for real. Those are the two lineups going head-to-head -head on paper, but where this match is going to be one is on the pitch. Who's going to be lifting up that famous golden trophy? Ethan, he's fumbled the bag at so many stages. Champion
Champions League finals, Conference League finals. However, now it's do or die in the biggest game of his career. We're eight seasons deep and he's hit the pinnacle with his nation as we take him on in that gorgeous England red. Dangerous pass in the middle of the field and we lost the ball in the most dangerous area. And here's Martinelli, his former Arsenal teammate. And Vita Roque punishes us with the first chance of the game. We were masters of our own demise. Their clinical number nine gets the first opening goal of this final and celebrates right in front of the fans again. They concede the early goal here in this final. And at Brazil still continue to move with pace and purpose. Martinelli, are you kidding me? He has just done that like it's a normal day at the office. The number 11 doubles Brazil's lead. He flicks the ball over Guehi. He's completely done him. It could be up there with one of the best goals I've conceded so far in FIFA 23. Finish him. That's a red card, ref. Come on, he's nearly killed the man. If that's not a red, no, it's only a yellow. Come on, we just need that one goal to get us back in it. And Ethan has found Rashford on a run. He's bypassed the Brazilian defenders. All he needs is to finish his dinner. Right on half time again, we have found a lifeline, half in the deficit. And it's our first real major opportunity. It's a Nguyenary assist. Cutting through the lines of the Brazil defense, catching them off guard. And it's 2 1, baby. England are back in the contest. Who lost our possession, and Sessignon wins it back in the most brutal fashion and Ranieri needs to stay on side here. I think he is. No, he's not. He had the perfect one-on-one -on -one chance. The Brazilian defense and Ranieri was there to intercept. He stayed on side in, played it through to Saka and the Ballon d'Or winner can't get us equalized. But Foden will find Rashford in the middle again. He cuts it back and Ranieri's there and he's handed it through to Saka who is offside. He's found Foden back inside Bellingham and now Ethan has set up Phil Foden perfectly here. It's 2-2. And England have fought their way back into this one. Two goals down. And Ethan has assisted both of them. The captain leading by example. And has set golden opportunities up on a platter for his teammate. We have well and truly got a game on our hands, people. Now back inside. Declan Rice. We've got numbers in the middle here. And Ethan is trying to wait for the perfect run. It's Rashford on the inside. Now Ethan back Denied. into the middle. And on his weak foot. Why didn't he go with his left? Nishas Jr. now. He knows he's got the pace on Gwehi. And Gwehi has to take one for the team that might be a red card you know last man it's a professional foul we knew what he was doing but the referee is scared to give him a red and we will be deciding this one in extra time how 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 sway how sway how sway oh my god ramsdale has kept us in it what are you doing what are you doing why is our defense turned to statues why have our defense turned to statues are you kidding me right in front of the england fans too and now it's advantage brazil here we go right on. hey 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 rodrigo trying to injure his current team Mate. There is no Real Madrid bias. He's out for blood for his country. Nope. What are you serious? Like, what are you... Like, this is just a joke now. It's just a joke. How? How is the man, the man that two-footed Ethan should have been sent off with a red card, his teammate at Real Madrid, and he's just scored the winner to seal it. That's it. Done and dusted. Game, set, match. And it's another big game final. It just hasn't gone according to script. Oh, is it going to be too little too late here? As in added time, Ethan has the chance to score one, and it's 4-3. He's going to get the ball out of the back of the net. I think that it's game over. We can't force it into penalties. I don't know why they're celebrating football. Ball ain't coming home. Ethan fumbles at the final hurdle. And ladies and gentlemen, we are in the trenches. Brazil win their sixth World Cup. I swear this boy is going to have PTSD. That Champions League final battering against Barcelona. Now this extra time thrashing by Brazil. It's going to haunt him for the rest of his career. And I really do feel sorry for the lad. The South Americans are going to party on into the night. And it's back to the drawing board. Here for the young gun's career at Real Madrid. He helped his nation take home the runners-up medal. And here is how he performed at the World Cup. Definitely an improvement upon his Euro 2028 outing with seven appearances, this time three goals and three assists, six goal involvements. The production is there. When he's alongside world-class teammates, he just flourishes. He thrives. And here is the plan of action for season nine. This is how we're approaching the next season. We're leaving all the olds behind us. And here is how he lines up in this Galactico starting 11. They're hungry for the treble. And over the course of the summer, he got a cheeky plus one. Now standing at 93 overall. And his development this season, we've placed him back on advanced playmaker. I might just dead the Ballon d'Or dream right here and right now because it's going to take just an ungodly amount of time to actually convert him into a striker, right winger or left winger. I ain't got that much time on my hands. So yeah, we might just have to give the golden ball dreams up. The game is against him and the code isn't going to allow for him to be even nominated. So realistically, there's no real point even trying. We've closed the curtains on season nine of Nguaneri's career sim and he's here back again winning the Spanish title. Coming in first with Real Madrid, 83 points back to 
back-to-back -back Spanish champions. And in the Supercopa de España, they took it home 4-1 against Celta Vigo. And just to put that icing on top of the cake, it is Ethan Spanish treble. Domestically winning 2-1 against Mallorca in the Copa del Rey final. And when you thought things couldn't get any more spicy, you can't write this. He's up against his former club, his boyhood team in the Champions League final. Arsenal have gotten themselves back in the big dance without him. And Ethan has led Real Madrid to a Spanish treble and a potential quadruple is on the line. This game has got storylines galore. There's bad blood, there's heat, there's tension. And he's arriving back in London at the London Stadium up against his former employers, the club that gave him a career, basically. We've had enough bad luck with playing these finals. We're, we're 0 for 2. I'm leaving this one up to the CPU AI and letting it cook. Here we go. Ethan's in with a chance to shoot. He gives the assist. He passes off to Darwin Nunes. And the Uruguayan makes no mistake. Getting Raul into the lead. They're 1-0 to the good. Here we go, Ethan. In this clear. And Ethan against his former club. I'm sure he didn't celebrate. He showed respect and solace. A goal and an assist. He's a big game player. He's got it in him. You know, people in the comments have been saying not to play these big finals because it's just obvious that I'm going to win. And clearly, you guys are, you know, overestimating my FIFA abilities because I'm not really that good. As Real Madrid are in for their third. And it's Federico Valverde to slot home what is going to be the game winner. Here we go, and they're in for the fourth, you know, and they've got the fourth. I'm sure the Gunners are regretting selling their star boy. It's been comprehensive, it's been comfortable, it's been professional on every single level. And soak it in, because he's had heartbreaking final losses over the course of his career. And he now wins his second Champions League final out of three, winning at Napoli, winning at Real Madrid. He's returned back to the homeland and put on a show. Here he is, he's stepping up, he's taking a hold of that famous number eight. He goes ahead, lifts up the whole Holy Grail, it's Real Madrid's 15th of the save, and they balled out in that golden strip, some new threads for next season, we've got them already in game, and they look just so magnificent in these Champions League final celebrations, I'm so happy for the kid. It must be pretty awkward though, winning it against Arsenal, scoring against his former club, where it all started, collecting silverware everywhere he goes, and this season, again, he has not grown whatsoever, he's still one of the world's best, and here was his production, including that goal in the Champions League final. He managed to find the back of the net 11 times. Also managed to pretty much play every single game. 59 appearances, no injury troubles, no medical history, and it's a personal record for the lad. 29 assists in a singular season across all competitions. 40 goal contributions for the 24-year-old, and he averaged a 7.14 match rating, which was simply sublime. And he's transformed into a generational talent now with a standard market value of £165 million. Coming up to a decade, where to next. He's got a Euros campaign with England to focus on as he haven't won a major trophy yet with his nation. Now, I might get crucified for presenting new ideas, but hear me out. For the last dance, season 10, I've done a little bit of third party intervention. As the short king, he's conquered England. He's done all of Spain. He's won a brace of Champions League titles and now he is out to conquer the city of love. He wants to find the missus. He wants to win trophies. He wants to conquer French football and teach these farmers a thing or two. Doesn't he look good though in that new PSG kit? The 23-24 threads have been released and goodness me, they look expensive. Not as expensive though as Maneri's transfer fee because they have coughed up £297 million in order to capture the English talent who is now at a 94 overall. He's got one more season to go. He's hit the decade, the double digits, season 10 to get a piece of silverware with his country as he's been upgraded a plus one over the off season. His short passes have hit 90 his shooting probably needs the most work, so we're going to apply that Shadow Striker development plan. Here's how he lines up in this French outfit, and it's kind of like a little box formation, let's call it. He's playing right behind Mbappe and Guerrero up front. His midfield partners are Gavi and Stefan Bietic. They are definitely on Struggle Street at the moment, but it's nothing Ethan hasn't seen before. We got put to the sword, and we just decided not to let him have a chance at the Ballon d'Or, as his teammate Mbappe is up for the prize in 20. 31 alongside Haaland and his former teammates Vinicius Jr. and Darwin Nunes. We kind of gave up on the golden ball dream, but the game's the game. It's more optimal to focus on his career as Vinicius Jr., his former teammate, will take home the Ballon d'Or. The PSG captain isn't phased and he's just focusing on himself. The career mode gods again have set up another mouth-watering final and it's got Ethan Wanieri written all over it. One of the clubs he went out on loan to for a season, he won the Champions League at Napoli. He'll be facing the PSG versus Napoli in the Champions League final and we get to watch it out. And you already know over in the
the Farmers League. It was a walk in the park. 94 points. French champions. He takes home another league title. And the Trophée de Champions was also captured. 3-0 winners against Nice. However, the domestic treble wasn't on the cards as they were knocked out against Amiens in the round of 32 on Paris. The Partonope hold him in high regard. The city of Naples, the fans. It's a classic case of why you shouldn't fall in love with the lone player. He delivered them the ultimate glory. Now he's up against them in a Champions League final 2032 and PSG end up winning it in a five goal thriller in extra time. Kamarda gets the goal as he managed to get a 7.4 match rating so he must have gotten an assist and that is his third European crown. He is collecting them like infinity stones this kid. Look the World Cup might have gone begging. The Ballon d'Or was never really on the cards for him. He's managed to make the most of it before Euro 2032 and at 95 he's grown a plus one. He's now overtaking and aging Mbappe at 33. He's cruising over here in France, the number 21, with 51 appearances, 6 goals, and 16 assists. So he was actually the fifth highest goal scorer. The one category he always dominates, the playmaking side of him, 16 assists. That's 22 goal contributions, which is a little bit lackluster. Nevertheless, I'm sure he's saving himself for a massive international performance for the Euros. As he's a lock in that England team. He'll be caught up no matter what, as his market value has risen to 190 million pounds. That's a 6% boost. The English have been handed a pretty easy group here, being drawn in with Cyprus, Georgia, and the Czech Republic all in Group D. They've avoided a lot of the heavy hitters. However, we all know once the knockouts start happening, that's where things get feisty. It's been a flawless European Championship campaign from the Three Lions, and now they find themselves in yet another final. The Short King has guided his nation to a final with perfect record in the group stage. Nine points in the quarterfinals. Had a high score in a fair against Spain and just got out of with a 4-3 win and then they took down the old enemy Germany 2-1 in the semis to book their spot in the final against 2016 champions Portugal. They're trying to kill the demons of the 2030 World Cup and make their country European champions. We're going to watch this one play out in the quick sim. Get it over and done with. Ken Winery come through and it's another incredibly painful final loss. It just wasn't to be for him in England as he converted his penalty in the penalty shootout. It finished 3-3 and the curse continues. I know it's painful for you England fans out there. Even with a 95 rated Arsenal Youth Academy product in his prime, the English do what the English do best and they choke on the penalty shootout. It wasn't meant to be, but what a roller coaster ride it's been. I'll give you one final look at one of England's best. Will he go on to achieve greatness in real life? Will he get an opportunity at Arsenal next season? The future is very much in his hands. The world is his oyster. So he surpassed the 200 million range for his price tag. Just in terms of a match, sense. This is just a brief little career summary. He's been to seven clubs, won six league titles, two domestic cups, and three big Champions League final wins. Smashed the record transfer fee and won over 300 games in his career. Another in-depth added new Wonder Kid career sim and it's been heavily requested by you guys so hopefully you did enjoy. It's going down as a legend, a camp baller, a playmaking genius the streets will never forget. If you guys made it all this way, make sure to drop the video a like down below, hit subscribe, turn on the notifications, all that good stuff. Let me know down in the comments what Wonder Kid's next. Who do you want to see added into a FIFA modded career mode? Let me know. My social links are listed down in the description below. Make sure to follow me on all my socials. Subscribe, turn on notifications so you never miss out on any content on the channel. As always, I've been Sir BCHD. Have a great day and I'll catch you all in the very next video.